Congrats, you finally started being a field service engineer. You just got that job. Now you're curious to know what the training is gonna be like. In this video, we're gonna cover what training is like for a field service engineer. Keep in mind, this is primarily gonna focus on working on the equipment. Welcome back to Untitled Label, where we strive for greatness through optimization. I'm John, I'm a field service engineer, as well as an entrepreneur. On this channel, we talk about all things relating to being a field service engineer. I wanted to make this video to hopefully bring some insight, share my knowledge with you as someone that may be interested in being a field service engineer or already are, you're on your path and you wanna know what that training is gonna be like. If you're someone that's an industry leader, you're in a position to where you're hiring more people, you're increasing your field service engineer team and you wanna establish a baseline, a good fast track training program, Untitled Label can provide that solution for your workplace. First, let's talk about your training as a field service engineer. So keep in mind, I've been working as a field service engineer for almost three years now. I work on about five different pieces of equipment, so it can be a little bit hard to juggle everything and keep in mind everything that's specific for each equipment. However, I'm still able to do it from the day to day and you know, I'm doing okay at it. Now, I'm not saying you should be striving to work on as many pieces of equipment as possible because the level of stress that comes with working with all these pieces of equipment, especially being good at it, it can be very stressful. Now, keep in mind, you're gonna have uh, support engineers that are more localized to one specific piece of equipment or a certain family of pieces of equipment. But overall, as a field service engineer, being someone that's out in the field, it's usually beneficial to have knowledge on a little bit of everything. I'm not gonna get into the logistics of how to get there or what that should entail, that's for you to figure out. I'm in the position to where I'm trying to decide that for myself. And as someone that's really driven, someone that's a go-getter, you know, I always strive for more, which is why I established Untitled Label to begin with. I'm sharing my knowledge as a field service engineer. And now I have a solution for those that are actually working with field service engineers that wanna establish a good baseline for their field service engineers. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video. For now, let's get into the training that I've received as a field service engineer. So in my personal experience, I started out working on two pieces of equipment. Now I am in the biomedical industry. So these two pieces of equipment were relatively simple coming from working on radars and uh, weapon systems and etc. But comparing that what I worked on before to what I'm working on now, it's a much smaller scale. Troubleshooting is a little bit easier since there are less components to the equipment that I'm working on. Now, the first training that I received was about a week long for one piece of equipment, super simple. It wasn't a lot to it. And another week for that second piece of equipment that I mentioned, slightly more components, a little bit more hands-on, but nothing that's out of the ordinary that you wouldn't be able to pick up as long as you're putting in your effort and actually paying attention to the training. So overall, the first training I got was about two weeks for two pieces of equipment. Now, one thing that I do that helps me pick things up a lot faster is taking down notes. Not everyone likes to take notes. Some people have a picture perfect memory. They can do something once and remember it forever. I'm not like that. I like repetition and I like jotting down notes and information. That way, especially when I'm out in the field alone, I can actually look at my notes, see what I did and actually reproduce whatever results I'm trying to get. So a little tip for everyone out there is just take notes, write stuff down when you're going through training. Uh, you never know when it's gonna come in handy. It might be helpful later on, but if you're someone that's meticulous, attention to detail, you pay attention to a lot of things, jotting down notes is only gonna help you in the long run. Now, for the third piece of equipment that I learned, that training was about two weeks long as well. So the reason being is the first week was spent um, going over the actual maintenance, learning the equipment, and the second week was spent actually learning how to do proper documentation. As someone that's in the biotech industry, a lot of the equipment that I work on has FDA regulations, um, stuff that needs to be in clean rooms, 
there's a lot of rules and regulations that apply to these pieces of equipment. Now, I was fortunate enough for my manager, he took into account the progression. Um, I know I have coworkers that kind of got thrown into the fire. They learned the harder piece of equipment first, which I don't necessarily agree with, especially if you're coming out from the military, you have no background in this new industry. You have the skill set as far as troubleshooting, maintenance and repair, but you don't know the equipment. So hopefully you're not in a situation where you're getting thrown into the fire and hoping to learn for the best. Sometimes that is the best way to learn. Pressure does make or break a lot of people, but I don't think it's fair for someone that's new to have to handle the stress of travel, uh, training, learning a whole new career in a matter of two weeks and then just hope for the best. Simply put, that time frame isn't realistic for someone to absorb that much information and be successful. Now, the next piece of equipment I learned was another two weeks of training. This is when stuff started to get kind of fun, started to get a little bit more challenging if they weren't before. So this is now where I'm learning a little bit more about flow cytometry, um, working on these different types of equipment that have fluidics, uh, lasers and other different types of components. Now, the first week we spent learning the equipment, just really getting more in depth, learning the repetition, getting reps with it, doing maintenance, um, stuff like that. The second week was more so spent troubleshooting, uh, going more in depth as far as the equipment, learning a little bit more uh, than the average uh, person that would just be doing maintenance. I think this was especially useful because when you're out in the field, you expect everything to be perfect, but that's not the situation. Um, oftentimes you have to try to learn through experiences. You have tech manuals that you can read that are oftentimes, you know, somewhat good. Sometimes they're not. I've experienced uh, situations where I'm following SOPs and steps are missing or they don't make sense to me. So I'm left to kind of interpret things to make sure they're right or if I can try to call someone and hopefully I can get a hold of someone while I'm doing the work, um, they're able to help me out. But if I just had something, let's say a visual, something that I can just watch and see, I think that would be probably the best. After all, I think in today's society where a lot of people have access to the internet, they're watching videos, people can just see something being done and reproduce those same results. I think that alone can make a huge impact as far as being a field service engineer. So initially we spent two weeks working on this new piece of equipment, uh, flow cytometry. Then later on spent another two weeks coming back where we're learning about the uh, IQOQ process, which is the installation qualification, operation qualification, pretty much the paperwork that goes along with this piece of equipment when you're first installing it. The good thing about spreading that training um, where you first go uh, two weeks and learn it, go out in the field, work on it. This was extremely helpful because you're able to see more of the equipment hands-on. So issues that you may have when you come back for training the second time, you're able to focus on those issues and hopefully perfect and get a little bit better at it. You have a better understanding of the piece of equipment so you know what questions to ask in order to be more effective when it comes to training and improving your skills when it comes to working on that piece of equipment. Now, the last piece of equipment I learned is a little bit more uh, tricky, I'd say. So that was two weeks, again, spent working on this piece of equipment, um, just kind of learning maintenance, et cetera, how the equipment works. So the issue that I kind of had there was oftentimes you get pieces of equipment, you want a perfect environment, right? You want everything to go correct when you're first learning on it, but that's not the case. So that can affect um, your confidence as far as working alone when you're in the field, uh, doing things, you know, repetition, perfect repetition helps to build confidence. That's one thing that I definitely believe in. So getting the reps in, you know, repeating, repeating, repeating something until you fine tune your little mistakes that you make. That way, when you're out in the field, you know what mistakes to avoid. As far as the equipment goes, that's all the training I've received so far. Now you are gonna get training when it comes to being a field service engineer as far as admin. There's gonna be a lot that goes with this job. As I've previously mentioned in some of my other videos, there's a travel aspect, there's emails, comms, there's a lot that goes with this job that a lot of people don't think about. 
you're going to get training for equipment and you're going to get training for just being an overall field service engineer. So it's always important to constantly be improving, be working on these things to hone in your skills. Now, this brings us to something I've been working on for a while now, thinking about and kind of perfecting. Untitled Label is more than just a YouTube channel. Yes, it's your source for getting information to be a successful or well-rounded field service engineer. But one thing that I am able to do and provide as a service to any companies that are interested in kind of improving and establishing a good baseline for their field service engineers is providing video content, video training, and simple step-by-step -step guides on how to complete procedures for the equipment that you offer. One thing that I think is important is to have a standard baseline, provide good quality training and good quality information that is the same no matter where you're at. By using video content and actually recording and sharing this useful information with your field service engineers, you're going to be able to establish a good baseline, a good visual representation of the work they need to perform. And there shouldn't be any questions as far as should this be done this way or this way. This is one thing that I often don't really like with reading um, technical documentation, especially if they're translated from another language. Um, I've had situations where there are steps missing or the steps don't even add up to what you're supposed to do. So I'm left to essentially interpret what I should be doing, which isn't something that should be done when you're out in the field working on a piece of equipment. This can be extremely frustrating from a field service engineer standpoint and someone that's been in that situation. I want to alleviate that for everyone else that's out there. So if you're someone that may be interested in creating these technical videos for your company and improving the quality of field service engineers that you have, make sure to reach out to me in the description below. You can also find me on LinkedIn via John Miss Young. If you are a field service engineer, you're in the industry already, I'm curious to know what your uh, training is like. It doesn't matter what industry you're working in, what your background is. I'm curious to know if you would like detailed videos that explain how to do certain SOPs. Would this make your life easier? Would you be able to understand these directions compared to a technical manual? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Again, I'm John with Untitled Label. With that said, I'll catch you on the next one.